Uh, in the text below, I have included a letter to me from Dr. Marsha Wilcox, who has a doctorate degree from Columbia University in Behavior Analysis and Operate Conditioning. I've included this as information for people who may not understand how the electric collar can be used as positive reinforcement. Okay, <clears throat> this is an important day because it's the beginning of a short series of collar conditioning tart. Now we had another short series with her teaching her how to get excited in order to create desire in a dog that really didn't have very much uh, to start with. So um, I have an electric collar today that I'm going to put on her. It's not going to be turned on but uh, she's going to have to start getting used to it. In the meantime, you want to get this on? I, as soon as I get it on, I'm going to go and begin this training day, which begins the same as all of them, with excitement. They, so I want to get her revved up. That a girl, that a girl. Okay, ready? Hey, that a girl. Good, good. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay, good. Okay, good. Good girl. All right. So, she's in a great frame of mind. Um, and when you use the electric collar, you condition a command they already know. In other words, you cannot use the electric collar to teach a command. If I want her to sit, the electric collar isn't going to do anything for me. The electric collar is going to be used to reinforce or strengthen a command they're already doing. So be because of that fact, you can't collar condition a dog, for instance, that doesn't sit or doesn't come on command. Whatever command you're going to use to collar condition the dog, they must know that command or you can't uh, use the electric collar. So I'm going to use the sit command to collar condition tart. So in order to do that, I have to know that she sits. So I'm going to find out I've, I've been working on sit a little bit, even though I've just sit. Good. That a girl. Come on. Sit. Good. Okay. So now what I'm going to start to do is reinforce the sit command with this rope, with a line. Sit. 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 I'm reinforcing a command making stronger a command, strengthening a command with something they're already doing. Sit, sit, good, sit. I am combining, sit, good, that a girl, sit, sit, good, good, sit, sit, sit. When I actually begin collar conditioning, the electric collar is going to be used in the same way that I'm using this line. Sit, sit, good girl, good girl, yeah. Sit, dee, dee. Now every once in a while, because this is going to become the reward. Dee, dee, dee. All right, all right, all right, good, okay, good. Hey, that a girl, that a girl. All right, sit. Sit. Sit, sit, reinforcing a command she's already doing. Sit, sit, deep, 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 deep. Sit, good, good girl. All right, good, good girl. Sit. Now, every once in a while, I go into excitement. Sit, 
sit, sit, reinforce, strengthen this command, sit, sit, then go into the reward. D, D, all right, there you go, D, B, there you go, good, 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 okay, 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 good. So, day one, or lesson one, when you make up your mind you're going to use the electric collar, is to make sure that they have a thorough understanding of the command. Sit has to be known well by the dog before you use the electric collar to reinforce it. You know, the electric collar, I mean, I use the word magic. It is magic because it gives you a way to communicate with a dog that's far distant, maybe a quarter of a mile, half a mile away. If you can see them, you can communicate to them with the signal that is used between the electric collar and the dog. They get that message. And what we're going to do is create a signal that the dog knows is going to be followed by excitement or a reward. So, <clears throat> um, this is a process. You know, it's easy to say, oh, I don't like that, or this is no good. Um, life is full of opinions, um, and sometimes people have opinions because they don't know the facts. Um, you're going to see that this dog is going to be enriched because of the use of the electric collar. It's not going to take away from her. It's going to add to her. And um, you're going to see that in this little series. It's not going to be very long, maybe five or six episodes. But when we're done, she is going to be just as excited about the electric collar as she is this bumper because they're basically going to be the same thing. Deet, deet. Ready? Ready? Fetch. Fetch. Hey, that a girl, that a girl, that a girl. Good. Okay. Okay. Good girl. All right. Sit. Good. Sit. 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 Reinforce a command they're already doing. This principle is crucial. Sit. 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 Good girl. Very good. The electric collar is magic because when used properly, you increase desire, compliance at long range, and it is especially good for dogs that are sort of on the soft side. Dogs like this, border collies, dogs that have good brains, but they're not tough physically. A lot of people think that the electric collar is made for big tough dogs, but the truth is, and the truth is that it's made and can be used equally well on very soft, sensitive dogs. That's where it shines as a training tool. Um, really, the, a lot of people that don't like the electric collar ought to be huge proponents of it because it adds up to making a dog compliant without pressure. It's a... It's almost... It's magic.